guest is Spring Theory, the mousetrap car concepts on introduction to gears because distance matters and mousetrap cars don't grow on trees. Hi, I'm Dawn DeWitt and this is Charles Tharp. We have many years experience with mousetrap cars and in a series of lessons, we will provide you with detailed information about every aspect of mousetrap cars to help you design the best mousetrap car for your needs. This Spring Theory lesson will focus on utilizing gears in your mousetrap car to increase the distance the mousetrap car can travel. Attention will be paid to calculations that allow for making predictions about the distance of travel. So get your calculator ready. Why are you interested in mousetrap cars? Is it for some type of school project or competition? You'll need to answer a few questions about the goals for your mousetrap car project. There is likely requirements that need to be met for you to get the best grade or the highest score. Check those out since they should drive the decisions that you make for the design and components you select. Can the distance the mousetrap car travels be predicted? Yes, it can. So before you go to the effort of building a mousetrap car, do what an engineer does, design for a certain outcome. Most of the mousetrap car designs that you've probably seen rely only on the number of times the string wraps around the drive wheel axle to determine the distance of travel. When the string is wrapped around the axle and then pulled off, the stored potential energy in the spring is released. It causes the axle around which the string is wrapped to turn that specific number of times. That translates into linear distance as the wheel attached to the axle also turns. How can you get more distance without lengthening the bale to get more string wraps or using larger wheels? You need more turns of the axle to go farther, so... What if we use gears in a mousetrap car? What are gears and what do they do in a mousetrap car? Gears can be made of wood, metal, or plastic. It's just a wheel with teeth that mesh together with other gears. It's very common to find gears in clocks, drills, bicycles, and some simple mousetrap cars. Gears are used to change the speed or rate of rotation of an axle, or to change the direction of a power source, and to change the torque, which is the force that causes rotation that is transformed into forward movement. There are different types of gears for different purposes. Here, the focus will be on the most common type of gears, spur gears. Think about the mousetrap cars with long bail arms. This simple form of gearing slows the transfer of energy so the mousetrap car can travel farther, therefore doing more work. This is a simple way of spending the same amount of energy that's used to catch a mouse over a longer period of time. Taking more time to transfer the energy translates to greater distance and more work. Work is a type of energy transfer where work W equals force F times distance D. When gears are used in a mousetrap car, they can eliminate the need for a long bail arm since they also slow down and control the transfer of energy. Proper gearing can prevent spin out, allowing the energy of the compressed spring to be spent more slowly over a longer period of time, producing a greater distance. There is more to the concept of force and work to be considered. It's being simplified here. Gears work in pairs. Gear ratio is used to describe the relationship of the gear pair. A gear ratio is defined as input to output, or one to X. Simply stated, gear ratio is related to the number of teeth on each of the gears in a pairing or gear train. 
In a mousetrap car, the input or driver gear is the gear that is moved by the pulling string, and it will turn one time for each string wrap around the axle. The output or driven gear is moved by the rotating driver gear, and as long as it has fewer teeth than the driver gear, it will turn multiple times. We can determine the number of rotations of the driven gear, the output, that occur during one rotation of the driver gear. The number of rotations of the driven gear is used as a multiplier to predict distance. In this example, the gear pairing of 40 to 20 produces a gear ratio of 1 to 2. When the input gear rotates one time, the output gear rotates two times. Use the output or X as a distance multiplier in order to predict the distance the mousetrap car will travel. Consider this. With the string being wrapped around the 40 tooth input gear axle, each string wrap produces one turn of this axle and two turns of the axle with the 20 tooth output gear and CD wheels, which results in twice as much distance compared to no gear at all. Remember, 10 turns of the CD wheel results in a distance of 377 centimeters. With a gear ratio of 1 to 2 and a gear multiplier of 2, the CD wheel will turn 20 times, resulting in a distance of 754 centimeters. Distance can be predicted with a calculation. When gears are used, the formula for predicting distance is D equals GCW where distance D equals gear multiplier G times circumference of the wheels in centimeters C times the number of string wraps W. So how far will a car with CD wheels, 10 string wraps, and a gear pairing of 40 to 20 travel? Let's do some math. As previously discussed, the gear pairing of 40 to 20 produces a gear ratio of 1 to 2 and a gear multiplier of 2. Distance D equals gear multiplier G times circumference of the wheels in centimeters C times the number of string wraps W. So D equals 2 times 37.7 centimeters times 10 equals 754 centimeters. So how far will a car with CD wheels, 10 string wraps, and a gear pairing of 38 to 13 travel? Let's calculate the ratio and gear multiplier this gear pairing produces. The input gear, 38 teeth, will produce one rotation for each string wrap. Solve for X where a number of teeth on the driver gear is divided by the number of teeth on the driven gear. So 38 divided by 13 equals a ratio of 1 to 2.9 and a gear multiplier of 2.9. This means that when the 38 tooth gear turns once, the 13 tooth gear will turn almost three times. Notice the reference marks on the gears. Look how slowly the large 38 tooth gear turns. In the time that it makes one rotation, the small 13 tooth gear turns almost three times. That's gear ratio for you. So how far will a car with CD wheels, 10 string wraps, and a gear multiplier of 2.9 travel? Let's do the math. D equals GCW, so D equals G 2.9 times C 37.7 centimeters times W 10 string wraps, and that equals 1,093 centimeters, which is about 400 centimeters farther than the 40-20 pairing reviewed earlier. What about a gear pairing of 58 to 13? What would the ratio and gear multiplier be? 
The input gear 58T will produce one rotation for each string wrap. Solve for X where the number of teeth on the driver gear is divided by the number of teeth on the driven gear. So 58 divided by 13 equals a ratio of 1 to 4.5 and a gear multiplier of 4.5. This means that when the 58 tooth gear turns once, the 13 tooth gear will turn four and a half times. How far will a mousetrap car with this gearing, CD wheels, and 10 string wraps travel? Let's do the math. D equals GCW, so D equals G 4.5 times C 37.7 centimeters times W 10 string wraps and that equals 1,696.5 centimeters, which is more than 700 centimeters farther than the 38 to 13 pairing. Take a look at the predictions. In a controlled experiment, the manipulated or independent variable is the gear multiplier and the wheel circumference is held constant at 37.7 centimeters. The number of string wraps is held constant at 10. This mathematically illustrates the effect that gear ratio has on the dependent variable, the distance traveled in centimeters. We can hypothesize. If a larger gear ratio is used, then the mousetrap car will travel farther. This illustrates the use of gears in a mousetrap car to make the mousetrap car travel farther. Gears control energy transfer. Gears allow for a smaller, lighter mousetrap car to be designed. Gears produce greater speed in some instances. Why wouldn't you want to incorporate gears into your mousetrap car? In this spring theory lesson, the mousetrap car on introduction to gears, we have shown you how to calculate a simple gear ratio and gear multiplier by dividing the number of teeth on the driver gear by the number of teeth on the driven gear. You learned how this factor is used to calculate a distance prediction using the formula distance equals the gear multiplier G times wheel circumference C times the number of string wraps W or D equals GCW. Be sure to watch the Spring Theory Mousetrap Car Concepts video on string wraps and wheel circumference to learn about the effect those variables have on the distance of travel of the mousetrap car. This illustrates that you can determine the performance of a mousetrap car by making predictions using math before you build. Work like an engineer. Use math and be deliberate in the components that you select to create your mousetrap car because it matters. There are many variables that affect the performance of the mousetrap car and there are trade-offs that you make with each option that you choose. Deliberately selecting the gear ratio to match your wheels and the number of string wraps can improve the results. More than one pair of gears can be used as well, but that will have to wait for another lesson. This has been Spring Theory, the Mousetrap Car Concepts on Introduction to Gears. We hope you found this information useful enough to save to watch again later and to share with your friends. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel so you'll have direct access to new Spring Theory content. Until next time, because mousetrap cars do not grow on trees.